Hey, what's going on, guys? Last video we did walk through the very basics of the tiny web scraping library that is called Tiny Scraper uh, that we've created just for fun a couple of videos ago, and we walk through all the possible data extraction logic within the Python interpreter. And this time, let's try to scrape the data from uh, every single card. Uh, that I considered to be impossible uh, a couple of days ago, but uh, later on I realized that it is actually possible using some tricky indexing system. And the last video I promised you guys to show to share this sort of stuff. So without further ado, I would like to st start writing some code to uh, create uh, kind of a full-blown scraper to scrape this quotes to scrape uh, from quotes to scrape uh, com using the tiny, uh, the tiny scraper library. So uh, here in the current working directory uh, uh, I have also tiny scraper uh, library available uh, which is pretty important to have otherwise uh, it, it would be hard to make use of it. So um, just, just to have an idea of the project layout setup. But before anything else, I would like to provide uh, the header of what is the script is doing in particular. So I would say script to scrape quotes from uh, HTTP quotes to scrape.com uh, using Tiny Scraper Library. Okay. Tiny Scraper Web Scraping Library. Okay. And also by and Code Monkey Kin. And code Mackin is me for those of you who don't know this yet. So uh, here is our nice little hitter here. And I consider this generally to be a good idea to provide this like hitters to get an idea for those who would be re reading your code of what is the, what is going on under the hood within the source script. Okay, so uh, first we need to uh, import uh, Tiny scraper, uh, assuming it's located in the same directory. Okay, so I say from TS import all. And why I'm not just uh, importing TS? That's because I want to make use of uh, JSON and CSV uh, library modules, uh, so I don't need to import this, uh, them in my current project file. This this, this file. Kind of it. So now let me just try to open the terminal in the current working directory, and by taking Python three quotes dot I'm just want to uh, uh, figure that out if it had been imported correctly or not, and it, and it seems like it was actually. And also, I want to specify the target URL uh, we're supposed to be scraping data from. So the target URL would be equal to say URL equals to um, HTTP quotes dot to scrape dot com. And uh, now we need to make uh, HTTP. Oh my God make HTTP request to target URL okay so uh, I will create the content variable uh, that would be equal to so there is the only the bare parse method within the tiny scraper as was already mentioned in the previous part of this crash course so uh, I'm providing the URL here. I'm not providing the, any custom regular expression or headers or method type, uh, if you would like. So save by default it would be the dev, the uh, get method, but we can say method equals to say post, and this would be post me method already. So uh, don't forget that this parse method wraps the uh, URL lib dot request uh, uh, dot request object. That's quite important thing to consider. And let's actually print our content. So 
just to show you how it looks like. Okay. So, oh my god, no such file directory. Sorry. Oh, sorry guys, uh, just uh, malform the URL, and that's the case why he thinks it's the local file actually. So I just need to get rid of the space and try it one more time. So I've also added uh, a functionality to uh, uh, parse uh, content from the local file in a quite pretty trivial way. So, lots of data here. We have the parsed content, and then we have the bare, the raw HTML. It's too long to scroll to show you this, so this is better to say this like. So we say uh, uh, content is a type of dictionary. So if you just have a look at the keys of the content. Uh, it shows like we got response text and text key so we just uh, uh, have a look at the response it would give us the bare uh, URL lib response object okay and if we just have a look at the HTML uh, no it's probably oh my god again like how, how is this I forget how I call this text I'm sorry not HTML it's called text because it might leave the JSON as well so uh, in, in case in case of JSON response so here we got the bare HTML and if we just uh, specify the text here we will uh, we'll have already parsed version of this content and this is the exact response we need now in particular so I can say tags right over in here so from now on, we, we would have been working uh, only with the text that I parsed from this sort of the page. But you know, like, I don't really want to make a request to the target URL every time during the debugging process. So, uh, first, I would probably like to store the response locally. So, in order to do this, uh, uh, we can say, uh, or, you know, like, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I would probably just command this out later on. So, um, first, okay, so I will probably just command this out later on. So, uh, I want to store uh, HTML response uh, locally, and uh, I need to say with open, and let's call this response, uh, uh, let's call this just quotes. quotes dot html I want to write the file stream as file and f dot write content text this like way so let's try again and I hope to see this h to close that html file to appear right over in here okay perfect so from now on uh, what we can do here uh, we can avoid uh, using this URL so uh, I just want uh, as far as we got our uh, local response mm, uh, okay so this would be so just I want to command this out we don't need this anymore right. and I would I would just command this out for a while and here I would say uh, reference uh, or better like load HTML from local file. And here is the tree guys that the, that I've added uh, this morning basically. So we can simply say like content uh, would it be equal to um, parse and I'm using the file name or literally, literally the path to this quotes HTML. So if I just say quotes.html, it would fail to make a request because it's not a valid URL, right? But it would then try to actually load this local sort uh, of a file. I'm just trying to print uh, this content again, then what we will see in return. So it's printed instantly without making a request. And, and one little interesting thing here, if we try to have a look at the response now we'll see that we uh, were looking for the local file source right and all the rest would be just literally the same so the text uh, the text would be just the HTML and the tags would be just the forest version again so from now on we can actually work uh, with a local copy of the content 
and um, yeah I guess so uh, ju just for, for simplicity uh, so uh, I could have just want to copy this part right over in here okay and uh, also this part so now here we can say like tags and actually I want to reference the tags here as well so I just want to take this away for a while okay and okay perfect so load HTML from local file so then uh, I would just command this and uncommand this uh, th this kind of part th this this is kind of it uh, but for now on let's work with the local copy so uh, now we need to loop over the entire uh, content but uh, as I was mentioning we'll make use of indexes so here I would say loop over uh, all the tags right uh, over all the tags list okay and I would say for index in range from 0 and to the length of our content and just to bear in mind in this case content would be the tag list right so if you don't specify tags here so uh, now I can just say like content dislike but if you don't specify tags right over in here you can specify them right over in here and the same and the result will be the same so let's run print uh, content index by the index just want to show you this guy so okay my god what is oh <laughs> what have I done it's not a string obviously so are you kidding me uh... <laughs> okay so not the not content but like content text like this obviously uh, yeah but uh, this is too complicated, so it's better just to make it once right over in here, and then we can use the content as a list already, and getting, li getting literally the same result. And now we need to distinguish every single tag of the div, uh, uh, di every div tag with a class of quote, uh, to obtain the, ver the starting index we're looking for. So, uh, let's actually do this, so I can say if and this would be the kind of multiple condition so uh, I would say uh, content indexed by the index uh, and <laughs> why am I doing this as a string and uh, I want the tag attribute uh, the, the tag name uh, would be equal to uh, to be to match uh, a div okay and also content index by the index and the attributes and within the attributes I want the class to be equal to quote save and let's just try to print our uh, content index by the index and I suppose to see all the div elements with a uh, class of tag now instead so oh my god I'm just wondering oh I gotta put a column so now we got this uh, div class quote div class quote so up to 10 elements basically are available so uh, and this would be our starting index uh, where uh, distinguishing the card by so Mm, now we need to initialize current index and the current index uh, would be equal index we have plus one so uh, now we would, be, we would be pointing not to this div but to this span instead and now we need to create a while loop uh, so uh, loop over card basically uh, until hit another one another card so here uh, I just want to create a while loop so I say while and again like so here uh, I say content and this time I reference in content by this 
current index and if it's not equal to div and content current index is uh, I'm sorry uh, attribute so no here it's tag right and here attributes and class class is not equal to quote so if, if we hit whatever but not the div class quote in this case I just want to increment uh, I just want to increment current uh, index and current index would be plus equals one and just just before that I want to print uh, content uh, add the current index just to show you show you this guys so what am I doing here current index save okay and I hold my breath and let's try to um, see what we got oh, okay I just uh, I just want to probably uh, break after crawling through the very first element or no it would be better if I instead of breaking it just print uh, several new lines to distinguish every card basically okay so let's move on so we got this text span and item prop text yeah class text so here we got our uh, quote within a, a given card then we have the author where, where is our author so here is the author and uh, here is the author link but no tags here but tags are not available all along the way so I just want to find the particular uh, element that does contain those so uh, let's have a look okay okay guys I'm sorry uh, I found a little mistake in the code so um, we need to change this slide a little bit. So if we just would look at what I would print in here, like print content indexed by the current index, it would give us everything up to uh, this uh, tag uh, and tax, right? So it's not exactly what we need actually. So. Uh, Sorry, it's not like not equals to div and not equals to quote. Uh, obviously, we need to, to exactly match this, so we need to say simply like while not. But in this case, uh, we would have uh, kind of list index errors, so we need to put all this stuff within the try except uh, uh, statement. So. Well, uh, just for the debugging purposes, uh, let's keep this. So, if just some typers or something, uh, I, I wouldn't know the error occurs. Okay. And Okay, but probably we don't even need this but what I want to show you here guys that actually uh, now we're looping uh, through every card so and the card uh, ends up with uh, so yeah we don't need this one the very last okay so Yeah, tag A and attributes the class of tag. So <coughs> now we end up with uh, now we end up with this this like selectors. Okay, so uh, just to make it a little bit more uh, clear from from the visual perspective. So uh, uh, yeah, it's just easier to to show rather than to explain and. 
I will then just get rid of this part because it's not needed anymore basically so um, so here uh, loop over card tags indexes range and I say for this time this would be sub index so for sub index in range from from the current index and to fra, from the index of, of here of uh, the general kind of index and to the current index minus one because yeah this this kind of like the very last iteration we just don't really need this well at least uh we'll, we'll uh <laughs> i'm not sure we'll, we'll just check this out in a moment and now let's try to print uh our content and index by the sub index and i just want to print the bare text to make sure everything is working and also yeah we're distinguishing the end of uh, end of card by this new line separator so let's have a look okay so no text here here we got text edison failure inspirational so let's check them out mm. so uh don't need this top 10 tags okay so no text humor of this smile smile Edison Thaler inspirational. Okay, it seems like we didn't use this par paraphrased. So, okay, and we just get rid of this. Uh, yeah, now, now we're nice. So, sorry, sorry for that. So, then we go live, love. Okay, love and life. Then uh, adulthood, success, value. Okay, adulthood success value, yeah, perfect. And I'm just wondering, uh, so regarding Eleanor Roosevelt, so we got this misunder misattributed Eleanor Roosevelt, okay. Mm. Yeah, we got this misattributed, okay, but for some reason we didn't uh, crawl for the very last quote. Uh, I'm just wondering why is that happening, so. <laughs> Just need to figure this out as well. Okay. Okay, guys. So I just realized how to fix this uh, one little error here. So, just uh, in order to. Uh, avoid this error list index out of range so uh, i've just figured out figured out that this happens during this while loop so just uh need to add uh, one more break condition so such as break on hidden uh, uh, uh break uh, on nav tag and the reason why uh, exactly on nav tag let me show you this so we got this nav tag and so this is the very last quote ends up right over in here so we don't need to loop further on right over in here that's that's kind of it so yeah, this is kind of the very last important things regarding this indexing system so uh, if I just say if content indexed by the current index index uh, is equal to not this one but tag is equal to in our case this is nav in this case I just want to break out of the loop and again so now we get the tags for the very last card element which is perfect and also we don't really need this try accept statement anymore so we can get rid of this exceptions as well so we can just go naturally through all the text and get this result so you see like now we did manage to extract the data uh, regarding every single card in particular and this is really nice so from now on we can actually 
try to build our data set uh, for all this kind of sort of a data. So uh, the next place uh, we're supposed to be working with then uh, would actually be just kind of right over in here. So uh, uh, here we will actually define our uh, well, uh, I, call, I, I used to call this variable features, so uh, this, this would be a dictionary containing the quote and the author and so on. So, uh, uh, and the link and the corresponding text. So, I just want to print this features using the JSON dumps and features and indentation equals to two spaces okay so let's keep it just like this for a while okay uh, and I'm just wondering why hold on a sec oh I just uh, yeah I don't need to bring this anytime uh, every time uh, so just once would it be enough basically okay so uh, now to extract the quote so we would, we would be uh, referencing the content by this uh, sub index so uh, just just something similar to it, what we've done here but uh, it's it would be a little bit different way so here uh, I, would, I would like to say uh, let's say quote or text okay let, let, let's 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 keep it a quote a variable name so quote and for quote in content indexed by the sub index okay and I want quote dot text actually right so let's try this uh, hold on a sec content sub index oh my god guys sorry w what have I done here so this uh, uh, this loop was just uh, for, the, for the debugging purposes, so uh, we don't actually need that. Uh, and instead, we would like to say again, like sub index, which would it would be over in here. So sub index and sub index and content reference from uh, in range. from index to current index this like okay mm. I just say extract data by card uh okay and okay now hold my breath and trying this one more time okay so not the index itself but actually quote so it's, it's not a quote right it's, let's say this called this item so item indexed by the sub index and the text so now literally what uh oh not not the item sorry content obviously yeah. this like okay and also uh now we need to filter this so if content indexed by the sub index and tag equals to span right and 
content indexed by the sub index and attributes class equals to text okay yeah perfect now it extracts only uh, the quote itself and also we need to convert this uh, list to string because the list is needed just for the debugging purposes to get the right quotes so now we got this quotes okay and now we just copy paste this stuff in order to avoid wasting your time guys so here we would have the author and it's all the same but if small uh, would it be equal to small tag would it be equal to author save okay now we got the author and now the same stuff for the URL so paste now uh, URL uh, so attributes and H reference a tag and if well actually this is I, I guess this should be enough because we're referencing for every single card in particular so this should be enough okay but it also gives so yeah uh, it also gives the URLs regarding the tags so we can consider just the very first element okay because we're looking for the very first URL within uh, this one the very first URL within this uh, this sort of a card but also uh, uh, if you don't like this approach uh, uh, the other approach uh, could be to say like if content sub index uh, uh, text uh, attributes text uh, uh, no uh, if context sub index <laughs> okay let, let me just better show you this uh, and content uh, sub index text equals to about save okay so this is literally the same result but yeah uh, as far as we're looping through every single card uh, we can actually avoid this so as just already been shown and just, just like mentioned the first time so we can reference just the very first uh, oh my god just to reference the very first link available so Th th this is kind of it and now we need to create our tags and uh, let me think what kind of data type this should have be this should be I guess a list right but it would have two kind of uh, it would be the list of dictionaries containing the key value pairs like uh, uh, like tag uh, text and the URL so let's try to so yeah I just want to copy this again and paste so the tags uh, would it be equal to so we're looking for well let's start let's start with the text uh, basically so Okay, and if tag equals to a and uh, and content uh, sub index and attributes and class is equal to I guess it's called tag. Let me just quickly check that. Yeah, class tag. Okay, so this like, and let's have a look. Uh, okay, and don't actually 
join anything so let's give this a bare list okay uh, hold on a sec I'm just wondering why oh line 84 Okay, now we got this text uh, as a list here, but uh, we also want we don't we don't want only the tag itself, but also want the tag link, right? So, in order to obtain this, uh, we could have create a dictionary right over in here, and here we'll say like tag and URL. So the URL would be equal to same, but attributes and reference this like way okay so now we got our tags uh, being initialized quite pretty nicely so we got the tag and the tag URL and you see like it's the various number of tags so uh, it's just as the proof of concept what I've been talking about at the very beginning of this video so we did manage to uh, map the text to the particular quote author and author URL even though that the tags are not uh, kind of uh, fixed uh, there is not there is no there is no fixed number of texts so the, the number of texts is variable here and still we do manage to match this text just uh, uh, using this nice little trick of uh, indexing so we're within the range from the index of the current div class quote and up to the another div class quote element so uh, this is already kind of pretty nice and the very last thing kind of left here uh, uh, let's kind of create uh, I guess we can call this a quotes list so quotes list and quotes equal the type of list and here instead of printing all this kind of stuff we can simply say quotes dot append and features this like so append card features or card, card data basically to quotes list variable variable okay so we don't need to print this stuff anymore actually so mm, now we can simply look over uh, quote cards okay and I'd simply say for quote in uh, quotes this like and here let's just try to print the single quote okay and now let's use the json dumps here so to pretty print json.dumps quote indentation equals to two spaces okay so now we get literally the same result basically so from now on we can actually store our data to the csv files so you know to do that it's quite pretty simple so we need simply to say uh Okay, guys, I just realized that uh, we have a nested data, which is not really good for the CSV format. Uh, uh, obviously, we could have tried to convert this to some sort, sort of a different uh, type. So I'm not even sure. Well, let's let's try to. Uh, well, for now, let's try not to do anything. And actually, we don't really need to look over the cards. So. Mm, that was done just for the debugging purposes and actually yeah we can still uh, okay. so we can still print this it's, it's just kind of, kind of fine and in order to write this file uh, write this to the CSV file uh, we can make use of the CSV uh, dot dict writer so mm, I would say store uh, quotes CSV file, okay, and with open and let's call this quotes.csv, okay, 
and we want to write the file string as file and I want to create the writer that would be equal to csv dot dictionary writer and it would take two arguments the file stream itself and we also need to specify the field names and it would be equal so let's take our quotes and the very first element and keys as far as the it's a dictionary there right so uh now we can say so writer dot write header to write the column names and also writer dot write rows and our quotes so uh this might not work because of uh, this nested data but let's actually see if we just got something okay it seems even we got something here so author url text i'm just wondering what's going on there with the text so the text were stored like uh they were tr translated to a string converted to string so i just want to have a look at this uh within uh, i just want to look at this in the LibreOffice, and then we'll have one last thing i'll show you how to crawl through the pages it's not really tiny scraper specific but still it might be the case uh, when you, you you might want to crawl through the pages obviously okay okay so just want to uh, have a visual snapshot of how it looks like so yeah quote is just fine author is just fine you're always fun okay so he, he prints this text as a list actually of extracted text so th this kind of like json data well you know what guys uh i personally consider that this sort of a format might be even even kind of fine basically so mm, yeah it's it's not that much of a problem actually so yeah as far as the, the csv is not really intended for the nest nested data so that's kind of it so the other thing that we, we could have considered here we could have also write this to json file so here uh let me add some commentaries so create csv dictionary dick dictionary writer and here write column names and here write uh data okay and also uh and here yeah here we could have write actually so store uh data or uh yeah if, even we don't even need this we can sort of just bear json so so let's say store store data to json file simply say with open and quotes dot json and I want to write the file string as file app dot write and this part here but not the quote but all the quotes save okay and here is our quotes dot json okay something went wrong here must be a string not none oh <laughs> i just forgot <laughs> uh okay yeah we don't, we don't need this print yeah obviously okay so here is our quotes json the json file you see like we got the quote author url tags and for the tags we have the tag and the url been extracted so the, 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 this is kind of pretty nice stuff here and yeah so uh well th this is some something similar by the way uh if we have this quotes to scrape dot javascript but uh, uh, i've been showing you guys how to scrape uh data from the javascript variables really numerous numerous times uh, on this sort of a uh yeah so here we got the tags 
even no tag links, but author name, some, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this data set is, is a little bit more complicated, but still it's kind of quite pretty nice. So uh, if you want to scrape the data out of the script tag, uh, so you can just match the script as well. So it's not, it's not a big deal, basically. Uh, in that case, you wouldn't need to. So let, let me just basically show you this within the terminal. So say Python 3 and again from TS import all and simply say content equals parse and HTTP quotes dot to scrape dot com slash js okay and content and we want to to get the uh no, no we don't want text yeah we, we actually need our tags so if we just extract the script tag so let's say uh item text for item in this list if item uh, uh, no, if item tag is equal to script okay I hope this should work actually. Yeah, it seems like. So, yeah, uh, I, I can already see our data set. Okay, so this is it. Okay, this is our data set. So, yeah, from now on we can actually we can either use the regular expressions or or hold on a sec. What have I done? Mm. Oh, so we got two scripts. Okay, so probably uh, this would be the last script, right? Uh, you could also uh, search by tags, say like the the one that contains var data. So let me just show you this as well. Okay, let me try this text. Yeah, now this should be just the bare JSON data. Yeah. So the one that has this var data inside, say this is the this is another way. How to distinguish this so instead of using the index in you can say also if item uh, uh, not 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 like this if var data in uh, item and text okay so now we get literally the same result and uh, just just to make sure where it kind of ends here so yeah mm, mm, uh, well we could have used again like the regular expression to extract this sort of the stuff which which I already which I have already demonstrated before so mm, the matter there is just to actually try to extract the ta uh, trying to extract uh, first this textual data and then we can parse this using using the JSON loads so mm, okay okay let me just show you this just one more time to make it clear of how exactly it looks like regarding the JavaScript because you guys you've been asking me for this uh, quite pretty a lot of times so let me just quickly compose another regular expression here so I want word multiple times and then uh, well actually uh, okay this is the way and finally, so we're starting with this, not with this like, then whatever character encountered many times, any character, 
start this and it doesn't match to the very end it just matches to here and then we can say just uh it's not a uh, uh, regular expression for every case in your life it just uh, fits the particular uh the particular kind of uh case and again like whatever but this sort of uh, thing yeah now we match the entire part here and if we just copy this and again uh, the very useful uh, regular expression module is already uh, being uh, imported here so I can s so now I can say like so let, let's uh, let me just try to store this script equals to uh, join okay and script okay so uh, now we can say uh, JSON data equals regular expression dot find all and actually we can actually find as well I guess well let, let's let's make it find all and now uh, regular expression we just created and we're looking to match this within the script okay JSON data so anyway we need the very first element okay and again this like and then probably the very last one right nope Whoa. Oh. Uh, so yeah, this this would be equal sign, and this would be our our data set. Okay, perfect. So can we just now say JSON dot loads and yeah. So now we've just parsed. Mm, so JSON or JSON data. So JSON data would be equal to this part and print json dot dumps json data and indentation equals to two spaces so now we did uh, successfully parse uh this like uh, uh javascript version of this talk quote stuff to scrape.com using tiny scraper library and regular expressions and json module to parse and print pre this sort of a, a sort of a stuff so it's kind of it's, it's really some, something that looks like that we've done in, in, in our implementation uh, with the bare html selectors basically so okay guys uh probably the very last thing left here uh so just uh i'll probably uh, paste a link for uh, this sort of a uh, JavaScript uh, handling, uh, so just uh, a, a, a time reference uh, for this video. And the, the very last thing to consider is so don't, just don't need this anymore, don't need this, leave, don't need this one. Uh, I just want to uh, crawl through so it has up to two pages, right? So, page number two. So, if I just copy this and it would be already quite pretty trivial so if we make uh so if we make so if just make a function here so this like okay and say let's call this the scrape and mm, you're all right. So okay. So we'll probably want this anymore. 
and here I can just uh, make a, s a simple loop. So, uh, so crow, uh, okay, handle uh, pagination. Okay, so we can say like four page in a range from one and from one and two three so the page would be one and two respectively and now we can specify our URL to be equal so how is this made page two page and plus stringify our page save let's just print the URL first okay okay so we got this okay name quotes is not defined oh uh yeah we, we can't really do this uh Okay, so we will need to, to handle our logic slightly a bit. So, or otherwise, no, otherwise we can just put our quotes outside of this function. Now this should work. Is this going to work now? Uh... Yeah, okay, so we can't, can't write the CSV because, um, okay, so when we just know, uh, when we, we would start making our requests here, this should work. So, uh, so uh, let's say crawl next page, and here I would say simply like scrape and the URL. Okay, and now JSON should have contained instead of uh, only 10 elements, this should have contained kind of 20 elements. Yeah, it seems like. And the same regarding the CSV. Mm. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, it's again like. Uh, it's already 10 more elements here so we just close this and open within the LibreOffice again you'll see this guys okay so the first page ended up with this quote like a day without ascension is like you know night and then we did scrape another bunch of uh, quotes already from the second page so this is it for this tutorial guys this is it, this is it for this crash course and obviously uh there might be numerous ways on how to um, on how to create your um, kind of scraping logic you could have go the object oriented approach you you could uh, you could have even avoid using this uh parse uh method call so you could have just literally put all this code within uh within this uh oh my god uh you could have uh, put all this uh, data extraction code uh within this loop and go, go with this like way so uh, i decided just to uh to distinguish the the single function here it's not it's, it's not essential you, you can again like, just print the code right over here and you're like probably I, I would even yeah you know like i would probably even do this uh yeah, I guess this should be even better approach because I just want to make this keep this as simple as possible. Okay, so four quotes, four pages, paste. Okay. Oh, hold on a sec. What have I done? This, uh, oh my god, they are the same. The world, yeah, that, oh my god, that's because I was referencing the local file. Okay, guys, sorry, just uh, let me fix this in, just in a moment. So, uh, here I 
here actually we will use our URL okay yeah and, and I would have keep this this like way j just to, to, to keep it easy for beginners and obviously you could wrap this within a glass and arrange the stuff however you want like in example how was made how was made in my one-time scraper so that that might have been an option as well so okay I'm just wondering I'm just wondering can I okay so now we're growing the page number one and the response is fine then the page number two okay so from now on our quotes should have be uh, different actually so the world is a creative okay okay so so let's better see it within the CSV file it would be more readable there okay I didn't even notice that so okay the world we've created blah 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 okay and you know night and yeah this is life uh, is what you make it no matter what you go into mess up something in universal and the universe or it's a universal truth so yeah now the, the quotes fortunately are different so I'm really sorry for that uh, for for I just forgot to switch from uh, referencing the local copy uh, of the content to uh, the actual real uh, pagination crawling so this is gonna it guys so as you can see here uh, this little tiny scraper uh, library uh, is really yet yeah, powerful to scrape the real world data basically and you know like you might wonder that this goes to scrape out something really trivial but it's not really that much because uh, it contains a uh, really kind of quite pretty complicated data structure well uh, at least I'm talking regarding these cards but this the method I've shown here is applicable to whatever cards uh, to whatever cards uh, kind of uh, mm. Uh, to whatever sites containing some cards within them and obviously again like uh, I was already mentioning uh, it's possible just to go for the object-oriented approach but again uh, as I was already mentioning just for those who are beginners it's it might be quite pretty complicated so I was trying to keep the things as simple as possible but obviously if you're fine with the object-oriented approach you would find your own way how to use this library so that's kind of it so I'm really happy to finish this crash course finally and uh, I hope you like this video and learn something inter interesting out of it so until next time guys and take care